Today, we're going to talk all about a very misunderstood health marker, cholesterol. We'll talk about the different types and what it does. And most importantly, I'll talk about how your diet and other habits can affect it. I want to point out that I'm not offering any medical advice in this video. I'm just going to talk about the current scientific evidence related to cholesterol and health. If you're concerned about your cholesterol, please, please, please speak with your GP. Now, after covering my ass with all that, let's get started. The first thing I want to mention is that there is only so much that we can talk about in a short video. So I'm only going to cover the most relevant information when it comes to cholesterol and health. So what even is cholesterol? Well, cholesterol is a sterile, which is a type of lipid or fat, which all animal cells are able to produce. One of its most important functions is in cell membranes. These are the thin lipid membranes that hold the content of our cells together and keep them protected from what's outside the cell. In animal cells, cholesterol has a very important function in maintaining cell membrane integrity. To help you understand this, plant cells, which don't have cholesterol, need a cell wall made of fiber to maintain their shape. Animal cells, on the other hand, don't have a cell wall, are more fluid and can change shape. Cholesterol in our cell membranes allows our cells to do that. On top of that, cholesterol in our cell membranes allows us to transport different substances into our cells and is involved in communication between cells and even nerve transmission. On top of that, we also use cholesterol to form steroid hormones. The word steroid derives from the word sterile in cholesterol, like testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, and many others. We also use cholesterol to form bile acids, which are essential for the digestion of fats when we eat. So cholesterol is absolutely essential for life, which is something many people get confused by. That's why our bodies are able to produce all the cholesterol we need. Even if our diet contains no cholesterol whatsoever, we can produce enough. We'll talk about that a little later. Now, most of the cholesterol we produce is made in the liver and the intestines, and that needs to get to all the other cells in the body to keep them functioning. Because cholesterol is a lipid, it's not soluble in water or in blood. So it needs something to help transport it around the body. Those somethings are lipoproteins, and you've probably heard of them before. The two most famous are LDL, or low density lipoprotein, and HDL, or high density lipoprotein. And those are the two we're gonna focus on today. Unfortunately, they've also been given the titles of bad and good cholesterol, respectively. LDL is a very important molecule. It helps to transport cholesterol from where it's produced or absorbed to all the tissues in the body where it's needed. HDL has the opposite job and transports cholesterol that has been used by cells back to the liver where it gets converted to bile acids and used for digestion in the gut. Now, some of that cholesterol in bile acids gets lost through the digestive system and some gets reabsorbed depending on how much we need. So why does this even matter to health? Well, it matters quite a lot actually. You see, LDL cholesterol and some related lipoproteins are just small enough to be able to enter into the wall of our blood vessels. They're also just big enough to get stuck there. And when that happens, they build up in the blood vessel wall and that's when things get nasty. When that cholesterol builds up, it can attract a lot of white blood cells to the artery wall, especially if it's oxidized cholesterol. These white blood cells, whose job is normally to protect us, then become activated. They induce inflammation, and what eventually happens is we get the formation of a plaque in our blood vessels. This is called atherosclerosis. When these plaques build up over time, they can shrink the space in our blood vessels, making it harder for our blood to pump around the body. This is coronary heart disease, and it's the number one cause of death worldwide. Things get really bad if that plaque ruptures and a piece of it breaks off, blocks an artery, and causes a heart attack. Well, hasn't this turned into a fun conversation? We have plenty of evidence to show us that the higher someone's cholesterol is, the greater their risk of getting heart disease. But it's a slow process that takes years of high cholesterol caused by poor diet to lead to full-blown heart disease. This is why heart disease is much more common in older people. The cholesterol has had more time to take effect. While LDL isn't the only cause of heart disease, high blood sugar, smoking, and chronic inflammation play a role too, it has a major effect. We also know that reducing LDL cholesterol can shrink plaques and reduce the risk of heart disease. This is a really good example of how something that is essential in low concentrations can be really bad for you in high concentrations. You'll often hear people who don't understand how cholesterol functions in the body argue that it's essential to have high levels. This is categorically wrong. You don't need to have high cholesterol levels to cover all of your needs. And when they do get high, 
that's when your heart health is at risk. The good news is that you can alter your cholesterol levels quite significantly with diet and exercise. One of the main causes of high LDL cholesterol is a high saturated fat diet. Saturated fat is found in foods like red meat, high fat dairy products, especially butter and cream, although the effect of cheese and yogurt may be different, and coconut and palm oil, which are commonly used in many processed foods and commercially produced pastries. Reducing saturated fat intake below 10% of your total calories can have a major impact on reducing your LDL cholesterol. But what's just as important as reducing saturated fat is what you replace it with. Replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fats, such as those found in sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, and peanuts, or oils like rapeseed, has the strongest effect on reducing LDL cholesterol. After that, replacing saturated fat with plant-based monounsaturated fats, like those found in olive oil and nuts, like almonds, cashews, hazelnuts, pistachios, and macadamias, also reduces cholesterol just not as much as polyunsaturated fats, and has the added benefit of helping to increase HDL cholesterol. That's the type that transports cholesterol from the body back to the liver for disposal. Finally, replacing those saturated fats with whole grains, like whole wheat, oats, whole barley and rye, as well as legumes, also has a significant effect on reducing LDL cholesterol. In fact, High fiber diets are very beneficial for LDL because they help your body to excrete the excess bile acids from your digestive system before it can be reabsorbed. Fiber supplements like psyllium, which are rich in soluble fiber, have even been shown to be beneficial for reducing LDL cholesterol. If you eat a lot of dietary cholesterol, for example, from eggs or seafood, reducing it will have a very small effect on reducing your serum cholesterol, but not that much. If you eat a lot of eggs, you might want to consider reducing it to no more than seven or so a week. But in general, you'll get much more bang for your buck with the other dietary strategies I've just mentioned. Putting all this into practice, a diet that would be optimum for reducing cholesterol would be high in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, with the majority of fats coming from unsaturated plant sources like nuts and seeds, with a limited amount of saturated fat from meat and other animal products. That means that lower fat animal products like lean meat and low fat dairy would be fine. Up until now, I haven't mentioned exercise, but it does have a role to play, not only in reducing LDL, but increasing HDL cholesterol. A combination of moderate to high intensity aerobic exercise and moderate to high intensity resistance exercise, so weight training, performed regularly, you can interpret that as meaning daily exercise, seems to be optimal. One last time, I really want to reiterate that this advice is just for someone who wants to maintain healthy cholesterol levels as a form of reducing your future risk of heart disease. If you already have high cholesterol or heart disease, you need to be speaking with your GP about the best options for you. Now, I know that was a little more technical than usual, but did it clear up any cholesterol confusion for you? As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.